essentially talking about, you know, uh, best case scenario, this is a prophylactic measure. And, and if not, if it's something that's immediate, it still has benefit up front as, as a response, sort of. Right. We, we think it would. And um, there are probably not any uh, bad side effects here because heparin as an anti not available through, through the nasal route or the lung route. So you can inhale a lot of heparin and still not be anticoagulated. So there's little bleeding risk here. Uh, and we would only be exploiting the antiviral activity of heparin by this route. Wow. So we're um, right now working with a group that has um, animal model uh, up and running. And they're looking at nebulized heparin, also metered dose inhaled heparin, also uh, nasal spray to see if, if this is effective in treating animal models for the disease. And is that the chief assessment that we have going on right now? Obviously, this is, um, I guess, this is an interesting space of coverage, particularly for us, because usually we wait until something has the benefit to be shown in a human trial to gauge its efficacy and safety. Are we at a spot right now where we still need to absolutely prove the efficacy, or is this a measure of, of safety concern as well, or, of course, just a mix? You know, I think that uh, if we had a partner, we could probably do a nasal spray right away. Because I think the safety would be um, viewed as, you know, little risk. And, of course, heparin is a, an, already a, an approved drug. So it would be an off-label use for an approved drug. So it would be like the approach that uh, people have taken with remdesivir, uh, where they're using it off-label. So that you still need some buy-in from the FDA. But I think if we could uh, find a clinical partner who was willing to set up a study, I think we could certainly uh, go that way, that direction. What would that timeline look like? Um, well, you know, um, a, a lot of it is designed by the physicians, and so they would have to design a study and look at the power of the study and look at how it would be run. That, that would take time, of course, and, and I'm not an expert, I'm not a clinician, so I'm guessing it could take months to set a study up like that. Uh, the fact that the drug is already available and improved uh, and would just simply have to be formulated in a nasal spray would be pretty simple. So from the standpoint of, of um, producing the drug, um, it's already available and um, it could be formulated even in a hospital pharmacy. So it wouldn't be a, a lot of work, I think, from the standpoint of the drug. The work would be to set up the clinical study. Right. And, and correct me if I'm uh, um, uh, wrong on this, Bob. Again, it's not my absolute field of expertise. But um, is heparin, I guess, largely available? Or I, I understand sometimes we yeah. have risks of... There have been some spot shortages of heparin. That's right. Yeah. So that's a, that's a concern. Uh, although right now, um, you know, there's less elective surgery going on. So if anything, right now, heparin is not short because there's a reduced amount of elective surgery, uh, which is, is major use of heparin. Yeah. So I think, um, I think if it worked, w there could be an adequate supply found. Uh, but yeah, it's a concern. Yeah. So, I mean, potentially if that were to come into play, and again, the, the, the irony is not lost on me, of course, that because we haven't been able to do as many elective surgeries due to the virus, we now may be able to treat it more appropriately with this drug that's reserved for that case. Um, but if we were in an instance, of course, where we have a shortage risk, imaginably the resolution may be this is something in the immediacy that would be reserved for particular at-risk patient populations, right? Could, could be, yeah, could be that approach. We don't even know the dose, so we'd have to, you know, do a dose setting. It might turn out that the dose could be very small, yeah. um, or the window uh, for its use would be very limited. So it might not even draw a lot of the drug out of the, you know, the routine use as an anticoagulant. So I'm, I'm just not certain what uh, the cost would be as far as the amount of drug that's available. 